Let's just suppose we do finally build a conscious machine. Wouldn't that mean we'd finally solve the mystery of consciousness? Isn't that precisely why we are trying to build them, so we can finally understand consciousness? And surely that's going to be enough to satisfy the philosophers. Even if they built a machine that behaved just like we did and we actually knew somehow that it was conscious, which I don't think we could know, yeah. even if we knew that it was conscious, they still wouldn't have explained it. Because, okay, we'd, we'd look at the physical stuff, there, there it would be, and we'd say, yeah. when that physical stuff is happening, this yeah. creature is having a conscious experience of tasting salami. Yeah. But there would, all, we, all we'd have, once again, is a correlation. That when, when you get this physical stuff, these microchips, whatever, you get the taste of salami. Mm. We know they correlate, but that, that doesn't explain anything. We can give this, imagine giving this incredibly complete story of all the physical goings on. Yeah. Well, how could that ever explain, how could we ever stand, understand how that was the basis of a sensory experience like seeing red or having a certain taste or feeling velvet? Mm. They can't, they can't seriously think that they've explained it, it seems to me. No. I, I mean, I find it hard to understand what their conception of consciousness is if they think that they can explain it like that. But surely if we knew everything that there was possibly to know about the... physically, about a, a, a piece of artificial intelligence equipment right. or the brain, yeah. what else is there to know? Uh, well... Uh, in reply, I could tell you a story that's very popular with philosophers. Um, it's the story of the black and white room. It was invented by an Australian philosopher called Frank Jackson. Um, and what he imagines is a scientist called Mary, who is an expert on color vision, on, on the whole physical basis of color vision. According to the story, she lives all her life in a black and white room and she never ever sees anything but black and white. Okay, she knows everything there is to know about the physics of color vision and yeah. what happens in the brain when, you, when someone's in front of a, a yeah. red wall, say. I imagine, and imagine she's, she's got this scanner based on your brain and she can look at your brain and she can say, okay, now you're seeing red, now you're seeing blue, now you're seeing green. And she's always yeah. right because she just knows what the physical basis is. Yes. But she herself has never seen anything but black and white. Now, the people who think that there's no problem about consciousness, the, the physicalists or materialists or artificial intelligence experts, say that there's nothing she doesn't know about color, but yeah. that seems to me clearly wrong. And the natural yeah. reply is, well, look, suppose she were to walk out of the black and white room for the first time in her life and see you know, red or see a <clears throat> Jackson Pollock painting or something, she would learn something new. She would experience something she has no clue about. And that is what it's like to see green or to see red or to see blue. Nothing in her science can have given her any basis for knowing what that's like. So she had been learning the way a computer does, just getting the data. Now, if the philosophers were right, sure, she'd only really know what colours were like when she saw them. But if Minsky was right, she would already be conscious of colour. It seemed there were two possible endings to this story. So what? 
This is the first time we've ever actually seen colors. We've been studying them for 10 years. We've read about them, but to experience them. What? This is nonsense. Seeing. So what? Seeing them, experiencing them. What is this experiencing? I have never seen colors before either, but so what? I understood exactly how they be, didn't you? I, you, you can't still believe that. Not here, not now. What, after what we've seen. It seems to me quite extraordinary that people can think that there's nothing she doesn't know about color. Mm. I'd say there's just about everything she doesn't know about color, about what yeah. it's like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Understanding isn't the same as experiencing. Please, don't patronize me. If you really understood everything about colors the way I do, you wouldn't be standing here with your mouth open. You see, I had already studied what physical impression each color would make on my nervous system. I even knew what thoughts I would have. So none of what's going on in my mind right now came as a surprise to me. I'm sorry, what you're talking about is information, it's data. But what I'm experiencing is consciousness. And consciousness is made of something more than your information. Oh, and what is this extra special ingredient of your consciousness? I don't know. I admit I used to think like you, but now I realize what real consciousness is. It. Oh, and I suppose I don't. Well, if you're really serious that nothing has changed for you, then maybe no, you're not really conscious. Not conscious? Maybe. You're an android. How sad. Of course I am conscious. You don't have to be a theory eyed mystic to be conscious. God, I hate people like that. The ladies in the black and white room would always be in two minds. 